On the book, The Forever Diet, I read what I had written in the pages, and on this one I'm not going to read them, but I will be talking because uh, I, I, this will give people the time to kind of look of what I've posted. Um, the next few pages will be links that I've chosen for um, representative of the foods that I have in the Forever Diet are the food choices that I made for the forever diet. And so I'm kind of basically killing time so that people can look at the pages and they don't have to listen to me talking. I will be talking. But anyway, um, so uh, it's just to give some follow-up to why I chose the foods that I did on the forever diet. And so... Let's go to the next page. Okay, so I think probably people wonder why I put raisins in uh, every day. Um, they do have a lot of health benefits. And one of the things I read a long time ago is that they're really good for teeth and bones. And that is because of the presence of boron in them. And I'm no expert, but... That sounded really good to me. I do notice what happens with my teeth when I am eating certain foods, and it seems to be a, a good food for that. Also, all the fiber and uh, fiber kind of balances out that they have maybe higher sugar content. Um, the also, at, at the breakfast when I include raisins, I have nuts, which slows down the process if, if the raisins are being processed too quickly by the pancreas and putting out too much insulin at a time. I also, uh, they're just something, a treat kind of, and they sweeten up the dark chocolate and the nuts and it's daily I, I eat those for breakfast, and that's the first meal of the day on the forever diet. Anyway, the next food or the next choice that I mention in the forever diet is as to eating low calorie and as to eating uh, like in an eight-hour window for what is considered an intermittent fast. Um, and there's lots of research on autophagy, which is the re recovery of your cells, the revival of your cells. And uh, I'm no expert again, but I just, uh, that sounded good to me that, that you'd re the recovery of cells happens when you leave some time between your eating windows and so um, also that each time you eat supposedly your there is an insulin output even if it's something low glycemic any type of food so the thought is not to be constantly snacking and so eating low calorie and leaving some time for your body to recover and enter into that autophagy is what I understand is healthy and helps with longevity. And I like that idea, and that's why I put that in the Forever Diet. So as to nutrition and health benefits of nuts, of course they have fiber, but there's also a lot of good things about them. They have um, antioxidants and um, anti-cancer uh, benefits is what I understand. I have a relative that has a problem with um, colon polyps that uh, 
recently I read an article that uh, colon cancer is prevented or uh, there is help preventing them by eating nuts every day. So, I mean, I, they also are very good for satiety, and so I like that. I use them, uh, I put them in twice a day. So, uh, in the morning, the nuts with the raisins and chocolate and milk, and then uh, either milk or chocolate milk or hot chocolate, whichever. And uh, then at lunch with the fruit and um, whatever else I have on there that I have a animal source of protein but it can be a vegan or vegetarian choice of protein with the nuts and fruit and the, the nuts slow down the fruit and uh, fruit that may cause insulin spikes also it's just a, a, you need kind of I mean I'm constantly thinking of how to balance everything out and that in my opinion uh, does but anyway these are some links that might give us some ideas of why I chose nuts as a, a an addition to the forever diet and then the next thing of course is fruits and vegetables which everybody knows they're good diet foods because they have good antioxidants and enzymes and everything you need for fiber and uh, they're healthy uh, and I, I only included one thing there uh, for one link there for that um, or maybe I have two yeah two a lot of benefits from fruit and fruits and vegetables and then for skim milk now skim milk is kind of a personal choice and I included one link and that one has uh, a breakdown of the different types of what they call milks like oat almond uh, soy whatever and it breaks it down but for me my personal choice is skim because uh, the skim milk I notice if I don't have it in my diet even with a supplement my fingernails start breaking so I don't like that and uh, it's almost instant and so I have to include it and um, also I don't have full fat because full flat fat seems to cause me uh, to have to clear my throat a lot from phlegm um, also uh, I notice that I get from full fat dairy a buildup of what they call cellulite the cottage cheese bumps under your skin and that only seems to happen when I have full fat dairy so um, I avoid full fat and I may have a lower fat cottage cheese because I'm vegetarian and that is for for my animal uh, product fruit protein fat choice but I don't I try to, to avoid full fat as much as possible anyway uh, let's go to the next page if I can get it to turn it wouldn't turn the last time okay so the next one is as to the nut nutrition and health benefits of chocolate which chocolate I include a lot of times with my milk and I also uh, have the dark chocolate in the morning and that is because I have read a lot on the antioxidants of chocolate and I know that you can't be eating a bunch of sugary chocolate or then you get you have uh, it certainly isn't good for your health to have sugary chocolate but 
I use the dark chocolate with some stevia in my uh, hot chocolate or just in milk. And um, the reason that I chose chocolate for adding in, partly because it's really pleasant for me to drink and eat. So that's, of course, a consideration. But it also has a lot of uh, benefits. Uh, recently, I've even even more benefits than I knew. It has antioxidants, but also the the recent thought is that it uh, has makes your stem cells renew. If you have chocolate twice a day, that your stem cells renew because of it. And I mean, that sounds good to me. <laughs> so um, that's the reason I um, don't cut it out of my diet. There are studies which kind of uh, deter you from wanting to eat chocolate because there are studies that most chocolate has lead or cadmium in it. And cadmium, I think, is in the ground that, that it comes up in. So I don't know how you'd avoid that ever, but anyway, uh, I still include it, and maybe I'll die of lead poisoning someday, I don't know, but anyway, uh, that's my reasoning on a lot of this, I know there are uh, studies that may not, not be as promising as what I've read but that's my research and I've read many 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 books on diet which I've I've spent a fortune on diet books and read so many articles it's just too much to even count I've the zone the Atkins the keto the everything <laughs> And I've tried it, almost all of them too. But anyway, this this is what I've come up with. And I hope someone benefits besides me from any of the research that I've talked about. But if not, so be it. But anyway, here's to your health. Thanks for listening.